how many of you guys have been to San Francisco and mostly around downtown, Coit Tower area, and you've heard a weird bird singing, not singing, more like squawking. You might have heard several. You actually might even have seen them. San Francisco has a flock of wild parrots known as the wild parrots of Telegraph Hill. And the flock, nobody, nobody knows really where it started, where the flock came from, but they, I've done some research and the flock has been studied a little bit. And I'm just, this video is about my experience um, with the wild parrots of Telegraph Hill in San Francisco. So I first heard about the parrots. So, okay, so like I said, or like I was trying to say, they, the flock has been around San Francisco since, I believe, the 1970s. And I first heard about them when I was a kid. My dad was working a job um, in tele on Telegraph Hill, which is the neighborhood of where they, this flock is believed to have originated. And... He told me, I mind you, I have no interest in my dad's line of work. My dad made custom kitchen cabinets. I thought it was the most boring thing in the world. I had zero interest in what he was doing. But he told me about this, these parrots that would come and like fly into his client's yard and they would eat all the cherry blossoms off the tree and like there would be no fruit because this flock would just like wipe out all the, all, all the flowers. And that got me excited. I was like, wait a minute, that sounds like the coolest thing I've ever heard. So nerdy young Eric that I was, I started to do some research and I found that there was actually a book written about the flock and a documentary was made about them. And my little journey with the parrots quickly became one of the most magical times of my childhood this is so okay so my dad told me about this flock and I went out there and I saw them a couple times and then like I said I started to do some research and I found and I, I found the book and I found that there was this guy who was originally homeless and he basically like began this relationship with the flock he started feeding them he started to like name them he started like keeping track of them um and long story short, he attracted the attention of a filmmaker who came and shot a documentary about the flock. And then they ended up, I believe they got married and lived happily ever after. So I became obsessed with finding out as much as I could about this flock and me. And I really, really wanted to meet the guy. So I'm not proud of this, but it is what it is. Like I remember stalking the guy like in the yellow pages back then and like finding his number. I actually contacted the guy twice and he actually called me back. I left him a couple messages and he actually like called me back and my dad talked to him. And my dad also talked to the documentary filmmaker and I never got to meet them. And who knows if I ever will, I, I, um, I would love to meet them one day, um, but we made several trips out to Telegraph Hill and I found out that this guy, basically he became kind of a celebrity because of this flock of wild parrots. He started like this whole website and everything. And um, so here's, here's where the interesting part is. So I read the book and I, you know, did as much research as I could about these birds because I was just so fascinated by them. They are cherry-headed conures is the specific species and there were a couple, I believe they were blue, blue crown conures. So there were a couple blue ones, but most of them were these cherry-headed conures. Two weeks after I finished reading this book, a pair of the parrots, actually four, two pairs, flies to the backyard right next to mine. So here, I so actually not next to it, but like kitty corner to it. So like, here's my house, the house next door, this house. So like right diagonal to me, two weeks after I finished reading the book, a pair of those birds comes and flies to my neighbor's backyard. And you might think, okay, cool. Well, you grew up in San Francisco. The chances of that happening, actually no. My, if you've seen my videos before, I live on the complete opposite side of downtown. 
these birds had no business being in my, my neck of the woods. And what was crazy is that it happened exactly two weeks after I finished reading this book. And not just that, it wasn't just one time. These, these birds legit showed up about four or five times and it was always two weeks, in, two weeks apart and they always came to the exact same tree, which was a juniper tree. Mind you, there's a park right down the street, four blocks away from my house, filled with juniper trees, filled with them. But for whatever reason, they chose that specific tree in my neighborhood, right in my backyard. You guys know me, I don't believe in coincidences. It was literally the most magical experience of my childhood. So as I continued to do my research, of course, my dream was to actually be able to interact with the parrots, right? Is that like, they're beautiful, but I wish I could touch one, right? As a little kid. So I had read online that the flock of parrots roosted in one of the parks downtown, Washington Park on the Embarcadero. And I remember one day, one evening, me and my fam, me and my brothers and dad were downtown. I forget what we were doing, but um, we had some purpose and we were walking around downtown. And all of a sudden I heard the parrots and I was like, guys, guys, it's the parrots. And I realized that we were really close to that park that I told you about, Washington Park, where, it, where the flock roosted. So I remember running over and it was like, I can't even describe. It was like the most amazing scene ever. It was like, this enclosed little area and there were just parrots just dropping out of the sky from every corner just all around and you just heard the squawking it was like being in the freaking rainforest it was amazing and then as I got closer I saw that there were homeless people feeding the birds and these guys were covered in like five or six parrots and the birds were like friendly and like landing on them and eating from their hand and I was like I almost died and went to heaven right there, guys. It was unbelievable. It was like all my dreams come true. And then I remember like one of them asked me about, like he handed me a fruit, like he kind of was like gesturing, like, hey, you wanna try? And so I, I took it and then right away, like four birds landed on me. And I wish I could find the pictures. I'd have to like really look for them, but I really wanted to find them for this video. Wasn't able to, but if, I'm, if I am, I'll update it. And I have like pictures of just all the parrots on me and it was literally one of the most fascinating, unbelievable, magical times of my childhood. It was a dream come true. So that's my video and story about the wild parrots of Telegraph Hill. If you, every single time I go to San Francisco, I hear them, at least a pair or two, they like, flying around downtown. And if you're ever in San Francisco, for sure you'll see them if you go to Telegraph Hill. So you go to Coit Tower, you know what that is. Coit Tower is pretty well known. So if you go to Coit Tower, they're always flying around Telegraph Hill. You'll for sure, you'll for sure see them. And if you are by the Embarcadero around 7 or 8 o'clock at night, you can't go too late because then they're all ready to go to sleep up in the trees. But if you go around right before, like right at dusk, before it gets too dark, then you can also feed the parrots and have the up close and personal experience that I did. So with that being said, um, I would love to hear if anyone else has experienced the magic of the wild, of the wild parrot flock of Telegraph Hill. And anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my story. Have a great rest of your day, guys.